So we all talk about the, the standard uses of a tape machine, like record to a tape machine with a console and then dump that to a DAW. I'm just going to call it Pro Tools, but when I say Pro Tools, I mean any DAW. But dump it to PT, and, and that's kind of that. That's how a lot of people tend to use machines uh, or conceive how machines are used. Um, and then for a while there was CLASP, which kind of integrated the two in a semi-complicated, semi-simple way. Um, but over the years of selling machines to people, I've learned a lot of ways they've been using them. And it's really interesting because a lot of studios that my machines are in don't have a console. Or they might have a big console, but either way they just kind of inter integrate, interface the machine in different ways. So I've been kind of, you know, how you guys been using these things? Oh, that's pretty cool. And then I've become a better engineer because luckily I sell machines to engineers that are better than I am. So I thought I'd just walk you through a few of those ways if you're into it. Um, but f first I should kind of talk about um, just briefly the different machines we restore. So we, we do uh, two track quarter inch, two track half inch, half inch four track, one inch eight track, two inch 16, and uh, two inch 24 track. Um, I tend to like the 24 tracks the best um, or the, the two track quarter inch the best. And the, the reason being like a 24 track is I feel it's a lot more like analog, like you can stay on it if more. If you have a console, you can record a lot more things to tape before you dump to Pro Tools. Um, uh, and then like conversely, like the quarter inch two tracks are a, gr a really great gateway drug to tape because you can just have it with just a DAW and, and use it in creative ways. And then if you buy another machine, everything you've learned about tape directly transfers to the, to the larger format. So it's just a nice way to kind of jump in. So as Ryan mentioned, he's got a two inch 24 track MAR machine. We're gonna pretend it's just a two track. So um, I've got a Pro Tools session that I brought up and it's just real simple. So a lot of what people have been doing with machines is they'll record directly to DAW. They don't have a console They've got outboard gear, mic pre's right into Pro Tools, and they'll track a whole thing. And they'll buy like a two-track machine from me and not just use it as a mix-down deck. They'll, they'll take files that are, have never seen tape out of Pro Tools to tape and back. And there's a lot of misconceptions about that too. Um, it's not, you don't play it on tape and then rewind the tape and then play it back into Pro Tools. You can do it in one loop because a tape machine, professional tape machines, have three heads, an erase head, a record head, and then a dedicated playback head. And when we're done, I'll go in and show you all the stuff on his machine. But there's a delay when you record here and playback here because the tape has to move from here to here, right? So there's a couple quick ways to compensate for that, and I'll show you how that works. Um, so if you want to just jump right in, we'll jump right in. So I've got this, um, it's a real simple session, but it's kind of a, you know, <coughs> You know, like that. So let's say I want to take this vocal to tape and back. I'm going to send it out, output three of Pro Tools, which I've already got patched to the tape machine input. I've got the return of that patch back into Pro Tools return three. So I'm going to make a new track and just call it uh, vocal taped, box girls taped. And I'm just going to mute it because I don't want to hear it right now because it'll be delayed, right? Because of that delay we talked about. So let's throw it in record. And we won't hear their vocals either because they're going out. They're not going out of the main mix, right? So this is great for people who, who have more like time after the band leaves than when they're there. You can track this whole band and you get your two track. When they leave, you can take a drum submix out or vocals or guitars, just kind of one or two at a time. And then, as much as you want this to be taped, this will become tape with playlists or whatever. And then, when you're done, you can print it to the machine. Or, use it for more creative mix things, which I'll show you in a second. So, that was at first verse, right? Let me just make this bigger. So, the one on top, the blue one, is uh, pre-tape. 
and the bottom one is taped. So you can see just kind of immediately they look different, you know. But I'm just going to go up here and I hit F7, which is my cursor. I've selected tab the transient, and I just hit tab on my original one a couple, three times or whatever, right? Right to there. And I hit A, which cuts to the left. I go down to my taped one, do the same thing, right? And if these are the same size, which I should make it the same size, right? So now I just go to grabber tool, select this one, and then I hold control, and I select this one, and it lines them up. And that's really close, and you can get, get all nitpicky if you want to, but for this demonstration, it's really close. So because I'm a nerd, I'm going to consolidate this one, and that, that time stamps it right there, in case I send this file to somebody else, or this Pro Tools session crashes, or I move it on accident. It'll always, it won't go back to where I had it, it'll go back to where I want it lined up, right? So I don't remember the there. So now it's consolidated. Now I can move it, and then I can hit spot. I can spot it back right to where I had it, right? So now I can hit um, control, oops, control, and drag it up to there, or make a new playlist or whatever. But now it's on my vocal track. So. If I had a bunch of plugins on the vocal track, I would bypass them before I did this, bring it into the playlist, and unbypass the plugins, and I'm ready to rock. So now I can put that vocal back in the mix, and we can kind of hear, see if we can hear a change between the two. I'll just do halfway. So you're not going to hear that big of a difference, one, because I recorded this session on tape. Sorry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but what I've found is a lot of people talk about drums and such on tape. One of the things that I clue in first on a tape, on a mix that I did that was originally recorded on tape, is how vocals, how reverb takes to the vocal. You know, So if you tape a, a vocal and then your digital reverbs somehow seem more analog because it's got this different frequency response, this different transient response, and so forth and so on. So we can do that same exact thing for, for every track we want. Um, can you hit stop on there, please? And then that blue button? Yep. Cool. That locates us back to zero. So we can do that. Or we can take a drum submix to tape and, do two, you know, and then line it back up. And we've got this kind of a quasi, like, parallel compression situation going on, which is kind of cool. Um, so there's there's that, like, I haven't found the term yet, I don't know if it's called rebranding or taping tracks, right? And then replacing those. That's one way to do this. The next thing you can do, now we're moving on to, okay, we've got all these taped that we want to have taped. Now let's move on to using a tape machine as part of our mix, not as, as, um, as transparent, right? So the number one thing I think of when I think of a tape machine is tape delay. And these machines are great. All the MCIs we restore have tape, have, have very speed. Which remember that delay we, we've been getting rid of <coughs> with Tad the Transient? Well, from the record head to the playhead? Well, in tape delay, we want to keep that delay as an effect. And we can't change the relationship of the heads, but we can change the speed of the tape through very speed. And the speed of the tape changes the amount of delay. So if you've ever heard a classic recording, you've heard tape delay. And I just have one quick question. Yes, of course. You mentioned you were using, uh, we're pretending it's a two-track. Yes. Does that mean you're using half the, half the tape width for each channel? No, I'm just using two tracks. Two tracks. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Um, if you had a big Pro Tools rig, you could run it all out and back in at the same time, but most people have a more stripped-down situation. So um, I'd rather appeal to the common man. So, um, so we're going to rename this taped one just, just Vox Delay, right? And then we're going to hear both the delayed and the original vocal. And if I had plugins on this, I would leave them in because I want that vocal sound to be delayed, not 
not bypassed, right? And in this case, I'm going to keep my vocal going out my main mix and just adding output 3 to it. So do you want to hit play and record on that? Thank you. I'll do the same over here. So that's 30 inches per second, which is a little fast for this one. So I'm going to vary the speed down. And then that delay will get longer, which will be kind of more in tempo. And believe it or not, there's like charts that you can find for tempo and inches per second. Oh, wow. Yeah, so they were really into this shit. I just do it by ear. So if I hit mode, the GH24 series allows you to control the vary speed at the remote, which is really helpful. So I just hit mode, I switch to vary speed. I hold this button, it says TVI, which is tape velocity indicator, and it's dropped it way down. So, we'll tune it in a little bit, and you can help me. It's that black knob. Uh, yeah, up a little bit. Yeah. So I can write down, you know, hold TVI. Hold it. Yep, that is 12.5 inches per second. I can jot that down in my notes. I can open up another track and do a fast delay or slower delay than that, pan them a little bit or not, or send one pre fader to a reverb and the other one is the thing. It's like tons of options, tons of options with delays. Like, don't get me started, I love delays. And then I can do that with the other vocals, I can do that with the uh, guitars, whatever I want to do. So I'm adding things in my mix now with tape. And there's something, you can stop. There's something about, please, thanks. There's something about tape delay that's different than digital delay. It's changing the sound of it, putting it back in the mix a little bit further. Like I said, I can feed that delay to some reverb and have another sonic landscape with reverb. All kinds of options. Um, and again, all this gets added to my mix when I'm done. So yeah, so then we've done all of that. So we've taped a lot of digital tracks, we've added delayed a lot of things, and then at the end, we can take our mix out to our two track, and then back into Pro Tools on its own mix track, and then send that high res capture off to mastering. And again, we can hit it on the JH110s, which are mix sound decks, you can hit your mix kind of hard, on a playlist, really hard on a playlist, and then, and then one not. Just put the machine on input, or do a straight bounce, send all three to mastering, and I'll bet you a dollar they picked a taped one. So, <laughs> so that's kind of like the basics of, of the new way of using tape machines with DAWs. Because sync, you know, sync boxes are out the window. Um, so many people are just using the small DAWs with tape machines, and I think it's a great time to own both, you know? So, um, there are, tape speed is a big kind of indicator on how your machine is going to sound. Um, I misspoke earlier, we're at 15 inches per second. So, most machines are 15 inches per second and 30 inches per second. So, 15 kind of has that classic tape sound. Everyone talks about it. it's got a low frequency bump, a little high frequency roll off, and a little more noise, but I mean the guitar noise in here is way worse than tape is. And then 30 inches per second is more smooth, is more flat, better top end, and the mid range just really kind of stays set. And these machines have separate alignments for each speed. Even though it's manual, there's different screws for each speed, so you can just switch. You can do a vocal at 15, switch it to 30, and just hear that difference you if you care. These do not. No, the GH110s do. Okay. The the GH24s do 15 and 30. Okay. So. But I thought we were at 12 something earlier. We were. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. But that's the same EQ settings and bias settings as 15. We're just slowing it down. Yeah. So if you switch, then there's different um, inherent frequency response differences between the two. Yep. Yep. So uh, most of the machines we ship, the cl the client wants 15 inches per second for. Again, that classic tape sound, and then um, it's just easier on the budget for tape. You know, if you are mixing, yeah, exactly. Yep, yep. Even though in this case, you can use this tape over and over and over again. You know, in this in this case.
a reel would last, last us forever. So how I use a two track when I do this kind of stuff is I have a reel that I bounce stuff in and out of and then I have a reel that I print mixes to. And I switch and I, they kind of, the new reel is the one I print mixes to and then after a few projects on it, it gets to the kind of running stuff out, you know, because if there is a slight drop out at 18K or something, I'm not gonna hear it on snare drum. I'm gonna hear it in a mix, but yeah, it gets compensated for. One of my favorite machines I sell, since we're kind of talking about bouncing mixes, is it's a half-inch four-track, which was kind of ushered in when quad was the thing, <laughs> you know? It was going to be a, a four-track mix-down deck. Um, now we sell a lot of them, people that want to kind of overdub a track small and overdub a little bit and mix. And what I've been doing, since it's the same track with this quarter-inch two-track, I've been aligning two, like tracks one and two, a little differently than tracks three and four mainly on the low frequencies, you know, like more of a pronounced head bump on tracks one and two, and maybe a little more flat on three and four, and they can just print out their mix to four tracks, two stereo sets of tracks, back into Pro Tools, and send both of those to mastering, plus a, plus a non-tape one. So it just kind of like, and it doesn't take any more time to do that, which is great. Yeah, yep. So um, that's been kind of fun. And then mastering engineers go, great, I thought you got a tape machine to limit options and now we've got more of them, but <laughs> say levy. Like I said, it's such a fun time to own machines because back when everyone used machines, they all had to be aligned the same way because you're trading tapes and people were coming over new projects and everything had to be like standardized. Well now, like I said, I can send a machine aligned differently for somebody or you could have a 24 track and have each three tracks aligned differently to your own needs because you don't have to be compatible with anybody. And you can loop this around to Pro Tools because you're in your own world. It's just, it's so fun to see, uh, to learn from people that buy machines for me. So, and and to have, a, you know, a mix down deck sitting there and being used for more things than just a mix down deck. You couldn't do that when there was a 24 track and a two track sitting there. You couldn't use it for multiple things because you couldn't capture it. So, it's kind of kind of interesting.